How's everyone doing? Good? Awesome, awesome. Um, so yeah, so I have a spoken word piece prepared for all of you tonight. Um, but before I jump into that, um, who in, just, uh, just by a show of hands, who in the room knows someone that is undocumented, either directly or just through the media? So keep your hands raised if that person um, is of Latino or Latina heritage. Keep that hand raised if it's someone who is black and undocumented. And then put your hands up if it's someone who is Asian and undocumented, not including me. <laughs> cool, and then someone who is LGBTQ and undocumented. Cool, well now you have someone who's gay, undocumented, and Asian, me. Um, and then I start there, because I think for me, part of rethinking a system is also recentering the kind of narratives that are presented as a part of that system. When we think about comprehensive immigration reform, especially in our current political climate, I think there's only one kind of community that is presented to us when thinking about who is impacted most, right? And then I say that not to diminish the importance of, of specific narratives, but to bring to the forefront the importance in centering and understanding the intersections of all narratives. In the audience just tonight, I saw a huge hand go down when I said, who knows groups of people who are black and undocumented. Just in January, the first convening of black undocumented communities happened, but we don't often hear about the kind of narratives that exist within that intersection. And the same can be true with the narratives within Asian Americans and undocumented communities, particularly because of the stigma that I think exists in our communities in not wanting to talk about it, in not wanting to display our stories because it is shameful or it is something that we just cannot have other people knowing because it has to be hidden under the rug. But for me, the ability to share my story as an undocumented Asian queer activist has been so central to the kind of work that I do both on my campus at the University of Minnesota and in the local Twin Cities. One of the intersections that I have found that has helped me really live within the importance of the Black Lives Matter movement is understanding how in understanding the criminal justice reform system and in the conversations that are happening, that the experiences of undocumented folks is very similar to the experiences of black folks in that it is state violence that has incarcerated black and brown communities but has also separated families in the process. And it's the same hand that is doing this work that is pitting all of us against each other. So for me, part of the growing experience has been utilizing art and poetry to explore the intricacies of the various identities that I hold, being gay, being undocumented, being Asian American, and realizing the importance, not in separating those identities, but in looking at the importance of all of them together. So for you all today, I have a spoken word poetry titled, Nine Numbers, and I hope that you all enjoy it. Number one, I was nine numbers short of freedom. Girls to my right, Friends in the back seat and an endless road where every dead end formed into new beginnings. Freedom meant mobility. Number two, Langston Hughes once asked everyone, what happens to a dream deferred? And the only answer he got 50 years later were blank stares of apathy because the only dream I've ever dreamt were those dressed in black and white and my people misplaced within the lost and found indexes of white stained history books because we were once constructed as model minorities after a history of being called chinks, the yellow peril, and gooks. Number three, the day I learned of Vincent Chin, I cried. And my tears carried the weight of 20 million Asian Americans constantly robbed of their histories, silenced by the racist propaganda that started with a clanking of metal against a railroad system. Chink, chink, chink was what they used to call me number four. I bet you don't even know who Vincent Chin is. Number five, the day I found out, I remember the pained expressions on my mother's face, her words, I'm sorry, and one day you'll forgive me. Number six, in 2014 alone, Immigration and Customs Enforcement carried out more than 72,000 deportations of parents, 
leaving U.S.-born children to the control of a government where they will be forced to assimilate. The American flag stapled across their bare skin, red, white, and blue, a cover up for all the color they're about to lose because there is no difference between colonization and assimilation when their native tongues are sliced against the English cutting board and the music of their cultures are washed away to shore, their innocence stripped from them before they can even utter the words mama and dada. They will have drowned within the politics of America before their bones are even strong enough to withstand the forgotten promises of the land of opportunities and their stories will be carried out through someone else's mouth, buried within the narratives of those who have won. They will have lost ownership of who they are and where they come from before they even have the capacity to discover it on their own. And these are the very children that raise their right hand and pledge allegiance to this country of the United States of America, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for one. Number seven, one day, I turned on the news and I started hearing whole sentences and instead started to pick out individual words, words such as illegal, undeserving, lawbreakers. And I heard the disgust and anger coming from their voices as if I were single handedly becoming the target of their arguments. And all of a sudden, I started to think, no, that's not true. I'm American. I speak your language. I've been here for 15 years. I'm just a student. No, 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 please don't deport me. Here is all I know. And for the first time in my life, my status as an undocumented immigrant scared me. Number eight, it has been 15 years, and it doesn't get any easier. Because every time you choose to come out of hiding, it's like placing your body on a gurney, your insides exposed, and the hands of everyone around you are waiting for their turn for someone to grab a hold of your throat, to squeeze it shut until the stroke of silence is the only discernible noise. You feel your rib cages breaking, your kneecaps collapsing, and you feel your face turning blue because the only thing your lungs are inhaling are the words of hatred, and streaming through your bloodlines are the open wounds left exposed on that gurney until your body flatlines. Number nine, I am undocumented. A human with a story beyond the nine numbers of freedom that work to redefine me. Thank you.